Right, quick review of the Transcend Drive Pro 100 in car dash cam. Uh, here's the box 1080p full HD recording, f1.8 aperture for enhanced night view, six glass lenses as opposed to plastic, which you get on some cheapy uh, dash cameras. Uh, it's also got a G sensor for emergency recording. And what you also get in this um, in the box is a 16 gigabyte uh, micro SD card, which a lot of cameras you you have to buy a card separately, so that's quite useful. So what does it tell you on the box? Uh, it's got a built-in battery, um, which if you actually were to be involved in an accident and and you needed to carry on recording. You, you can take it out of the car, run it on the battery for up to 30 minutes. So you've got plenty of time to shoot the scene after the event. It does have the snapshot feature and it's got a 130 degree wide angle glass lens. On the back here it gives us a bit more sort of specification and it tells us the um, dimensions, weight, power supply, video formats um, it runs on um, Windows it also runs on the Apple um, whatever you call it and Linux ah, system requirements I sit down here Mac OS X and Linux kernel whichever so what do you get in your box obviously you get the camera itself quite a neat little unit uh, you get the quick start guide only about the first four pages apply in terms of UK you get your warranty card and you get a load of sales bump you also get a good long power lead for your cigarette lighter adapter to uh, you get your suction cup mount and that's the little box that the card came in <coughs> excuse me frog in the throat I've already put the card into this camera so you insert it on the left hand side there it can only go in one way around it's a quick tour of the camera obviously you've got your lens here uh, you've got a little uh, speaker there and a little microphone up here on um, this side of the camera you've got an emergency recording button which is your little red button if you press that as you're going along um, it'll record 30 seconds before and 30 seconds afterwards to what's called a protected file you can have anything up to 15 protected files at any given time other side is where you connect your power lead um, and then the back of the camera obviously you've got your screen power on off and the menu buttons what you don't get interestingly is one of these leads and it might be worth getting one if you're going to connect it up to your computer at all regularly that's the standard USB to mini B uh, USB so you can just connect it up to the computer without having to take the card out uh, this one cost 98 pence from Maplins on their you know order and reserve online click online if you actually go in the store and buy one the ones they've got sort of sitting on the shelf you'd be lucky to get away with paying less than a fiver quick run through the menu first thing you want to do when you get the camera um, switch on you just press and hold that one as you can hear it comes on quite loudly uh, left button there with the little microphone icon if you can see that this microphone on off so you can just switch the mic off if you if you don't want the sound um, next one along is the files and as you can see it's pretty self-explanatory you've got video files protected files photo files okay back 
Next one up comes the settings. So resolution, pretty self-explanatory, but let's just have a quick look in there. You've got either 1080p or 720p. Exposure value, um, you can adjust either up or down. I, I find it works perfectly well without playing with that. Video length, uh, up to you, you just set the, the length of each individual clip um, and, and it saves it to the card after either one minute, three minutes or five minutes. I've selected five. Timestamp, either on or off. Voice recording on or off, but like I said, you can either, you can do it with that button anyway. Loop recording enabled, obviously, and, and that just means that when your memory card is full, it will it will just overwrite the oldest file. Uh, volume self-explanatory. I've got it set to maximum. G sensor. Now, as you'll see, I've got that disabled. What I found with the G sensor on this is that it's so sensitive that even if you hit the smallest pothole, it will save a file. Um, and so you, you can do literally a five mile trip and it will fill your, your, your protected file up just with, you know, little dinks and potholes. So I've disabled that. I would suggest you do the same. Uh, auto turn off display so when you're actually driving along uh, it switches on automatically with the ignition and you can have the display switch off after one minute or three minutes or you can have it on permanently I've got mine set to permanently um, so we're going to leave that as it is date and time settings okay you set your date and time in there uh, let's go back out of that and date and time format pretty much self-explanatory language I'm sure you all know that English is the one that I understand so I'm going to leave that on English light frequency it gives you a choice of 50 or 60 Hertz just leave it on 50 it's fine uh, power off delay It'll either, if you set it to disable, it will switch off as soon as you switch the ignition off. You can set it to 10 or 30 seconds after you switch the ignition off. I've got mine set to 30, but that's just my preference. Uh, information is just the f firmware version. It tells you about the card capacity and what have you. Format card. You when, when you put your card in straight out of the box ensure you format your card otherwise it won't record anything I've already formatted the card in this camera um, upgrade firmware self-explanatory you need it connected up to your computer to do that and restore defaults okay that's basically the menu um, so if you want to play back your, your files you click on that one you've got video files protected files photo files so let's go to video files you pick which one you want to watch okay and it will just play that back which is actually the recording I'm making at the moment I think so back out of that and back again protected files these are the ones where Either your G sensor if you've left it enabled or if you press the little red button on the side there, um, there'll be protected files in there. Obviously, I haven't got any yet. So, okay, photo files. If you've taken a snapshot, and apparently I have, I don't remember doing that, but uh, okay, let's have a look at that. Okay, apparently I took a snapshot somewhere. Um, and then you can either look at other files or even delete it the photos aren't particularly high definition
to say the least. I think they're about 400 kilobytes or something ridiculous. Uh, so that's it, really. So next up is how does it perform? Right, so here's the camera mounted in the car. Um, let's give you an idea of the quick dismount. We've got the little power cable that goes in there. This little thing here just unclips. If you push that in, so I can't, you probably can't see this properly on the camera, but you push that in, slide it across, and you can drop it out like that. So you can either take it with you or whack it in your glove box. If you're parked up in a dodgy area, best not to leave these things on show. To clip it back in, just push it in, slide it across. Okay, so on the left here, you've got a little wheel, which if you unscrew it, you can adjust the camera up and down to where you need it. Tighten that up. That's firmly fixed in place. You've also got this second little wheel here which when you undo it, it gives you a, it's, it's a ball joint so you can move it left right up down basically any direction you want until you're happy with where it's facing and you can just tighten that one up and there you have it plug it in we'll start the engine now and it will come on with the engine Give you a bleep to let you know. Um, you can choose to have the screen on full time, which I've done. I prefer that. But there is also a little red LED down here that blinks on and off to let you know that it's recording. Okay, switch off the engine and it'll go auto turn off. I don't know whether you'll actually be able to read that because the sun's in the wrong direction. Auto turn off in 30 seconds because I've set it for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. 